Did you know that the question of identity was one of the most pressing concerns for many Jews living in the diaspora in the time of the early church? It's true. During the first century, many Jewish people lived outside Judea and Galilee, often in their own communities throughout Asia Minor, Greece, Italy, Spain, and Egypt. Like many immigrant peoples through, through the centuries, these Jewish communities were very concerned to hold on to their identity and remain faithful to God, who brought them out of Egypt and gave them the land of promise in Canaan. Holding on to their identity was not simply a matter of right beliefs, but also of right practices. That is, of observing the rituals and customs that God gave them to set them apart from the pagans around them. Two of the most important customs were circumcision and maintaining ritual purity at meals. A circumcision, of course, was practiced on all male children, ideally on the eighth day after they were born, although this wasn't always strictly followed. Purity at meals was a trickier custom, and not everybody observed it. But the basic idea was that when you sat down to share a meal with other people, you should do so in a state of purity that's sufficient even for service in the temple. This also meant for many Jews that you should not eat with Gentiles, because they were perpetually impure by virtue of their participation in pagan sacrifices and their immorality. Now again, not all Jews held to these customs with equal strictness, but for many, these practices and others like them were absolutely critical to being faithful Jews in a pagan environment. As Paul traveled throughout the Greek world and preached the gospel, more and more Gentiles responded to his summons to faith in Jesus. And as they did, the question began to arise in some quarters of the church as to whether these Gentile believers needed to become Jews and observe the law of Moses the way Jews had always sought to do. Although the answer may seem obvious to us today, it was far from obvious in the beginning of the church and quickly became one of the most contentious matters facing the early church. The issue came to a head when the apostles and the elders of the Jerusalem church called a council in AD 48 to decide the matter. We learn in Acts 15 that the church leaders decided that the Gentile believers did not have to become Jews when they believed in Jesus. This meant that some of the most cherished distinctives of the Jewish tradition, such as circumcision and ritual purity at meals, were not necessary for salvation. Even after this decision at the Great Jerusalem Council, these issues continued to be a problem for the young churches for the years to come. And we see this in Galatians, as Paul has to confront the lingering confusion over these Jewish customs within the fellowship of the Galatian Christians. In Galatians 2, 11 to 14, Paul confronts Peter because Peter had reverted to the old ways of declining to eat with Gentiles in order to maintain ritual purity. Paul calls this hypocrisy, since both he and Peter knew that, as Paul says, a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. He becomes even more impassioned with those who want to hold on to circumcision as something critical for salvation. And in chapter 5, Paul declares, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. And why? Because, Paul says, every man who accepts circumcision is obligated to keep the whole law, and none of us can do that. Paul, therefore, concludes with one of my favorite statements in all of Scripture. He says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. Faith working through love. This is the heart of Paul's message to the Galatians. It is the heart of the Gospel. And it's this, not fidelity to the law of Moses, that forms the heart of the Christian life. We hope you enjoyed this brief glimpse into one of our courses at Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary. If you'd like to learn more about the programs of study that we offer, please contact our admissions department by clicking the link below.